So we're here with Dr. Margit Fish. She's from Hamburg and she is the first female chairperson in Germany in urology. So this is an honor and she is one of my best friends. So thanks so much Margit. This is so exciting. I you know cannot even express how honored I am to just give a little glance to the you know the new generation who you are because everybody knows who Dr. Fish is when you go to the AUA, you go to the EAU, the uh, International Society, everywhere you go, reconstruction, so you're a, a big name. But uh, I like to show some other sides of you, if it's okay. So we're here at Jackson Hole one more year. You've been coming really regularly here, even when it's impossible because of the weather or because of other issues. But can you tell me um, a little bit about where were you born? I was born very close to the French border, yeah. so uh, the eastern part of Germany, uh -huh. and this is also the area where uh, I went uh, to high school and university, and then I moved to the center of Germany, so close to Frankfurt, mm -hmm. to Mainz, and there I did my training time, and finally I ended up in the north of Germany in Hamburg. And who was your mentor? I had at least one main mentor and two additional mentors. So my main mentor uh, was Rudy Hohenfellner. Uh, I'm not sure whether he is so well known here in the United States. He was one of the most famous German urologists, but oh. he was also one of the first really attending international meetings like the European meeting and especially uh, the American meeting. So he had good friends here. He's also a member of the geosurgeons, the pelvic surgeons, wow. the spoos. So, and he was really, he was great. So all I am and all I learned, I learned from him. Um, I'm really grateful that uh, he supported me. It's amazing because if you, See, there, there were not a lot of urologists when you started training, and here you are, you know, a chairperson. Uh, so, when did you decide uh, that uh, you want to do urology? And then, how, I know it was difficult, but just explain a little bit, yeah. how was the pathway, you know, the obstacles and challenges? So it started already during my studies because uh, the professor at my university, um, he was a great guy, the, the professor of urology. So and the lectures were always very interesting. So I got interested in urology and in a German system during the last year you have to do internal medicine and wow. surgery and then uh, for three months you can choose where you, you'd like to spend your time, but uh, the places are fixed. So I thought maybe gynecology, because we mm. also had a very enthusiastic gynecologist, and urology. Nice. So And the, the, the places in gynecology were complete, so no way to get a place there. So I ended in urology, and I must say that was the best choice I could have yes. and the best time I had because I was fully integrated in the team and after that three months I was sure I'd like to become a urologist but then the problem started because at that time there were not many females in urology uh -huh. so it was uh, yeah, the beginning of so in the services they had one or two and they always were worried about females could become pregnant and then they, right. they they are not coming to work anymore so it was very very difficult to find a place and i did first one year of surgery and then just by chance i ended up in mines because i had an aunt who was working in a lab there and doing all the the, the slides and the photos uh, for the urology department for their scientific work and thus I got the connection and I started there and I had no impression at the beginning that this was really one of the best places to be. So this is what I learned. 
However, I was, I think, number six uh -huh. <laughs> concerning females. Uh -huh. But I was the first who survived more than two years. I was the <coughs> first who finished training. Uh, the first who wrote the professor uh, thesis mm. and then got vice chair. <laughs> it's, I think it's amazing, you know, but what, you know, if you had to say certain things, what are yeah. your best advices uh, for women in neurology? I think it's, it's important that you love what you are doing mm. because you have to spend a lot of time in a hospital you have to make a lot of efforts mm. so if this is not something you do by heart and with your heart mm. you will not survive and the uh, second thing is uh, you need some power mm. yeah and some resistance so mm. it's like in life you have good times and you have bad times and during the bad times you really you, you need that power to survive and to continue and to, to say to yourself, uh, there are better times mm. <laughs> that will arise <laughs> and come in the future. I think that's a very good advice and for everybody. Yeah, and in addition, you need support. You need a mentor. Without the support of my chief, uh, it, yeah. it wouldn't be possible. So, other things that you, I know that you love. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, cooking. Yes, of course. Food, yeah. Right, and uh, wine tasting. Yes. I mean, that is uh, uh, the great things that you love, and we share the same common interests. What kind of food do you like to cook? I mean, I was growing up close to the French border, so, so <laughs> that's ah, natural. That, yeah. <laughs> that's French, French food. French food. <laughs> and therefore, also, uh, I like wine because. Uh, that's that's the typical, let's say, French cooking, mm. wine tasting, the behavior, which is very close in 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 that uh, border area. So it doesn't matter whether you're on the uh, on the German side uh, or, or on the opposite same. French yeah. side. So <laughs> the cultural thing is quite the same. So Did what you we get enjoy. To learn? French? No. Uh, yeah, uh, unfortunately, uh, I, I just was growing up with one language, uh, a German language, but uh, I did my year of surgery in Luxembourg, and there I, I learned a little bit of French, and we spent almost uh, all our holidays uh, in, France. in France, so meanwhile I can manage. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's awesome, because uh, one of the greatest things uh, living in Europe is you can really yeah. visit a lot of different cultures, right? And uh, in your department, do you have a lot of, uh, I don't know, uh, people from different countries or they're mainly uh, Germans or oh, yeah. and just males? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's it's not so easy to get 50% females right. in, a, in in let's say a field of surgery. So uh, I try always to encourage uh, females yeah. uh, to come to the department. So we, it, it's changing always a bit, but we have in between 30, sometimes 40% females in the department. Um, the majority of uh, my co-workers and residents are coming from Germany. However, we have uh, one guy from Saudi Arabia uh, wow. at this moment. And we have also two or three who originally are from other countries, but they were born in Germany. The parents wow. are from other countries, so they were born and, and growing up in Germany. Wow, that's, uh, that's interesting. How about instruments, music, you know? I played piano when I was a child because wow. my father studied music, but uh, at least you can't do everything <laughs> at the same time, so you have to stop. And uh, when I was growing up, uh, sports was also very important. I played volleyball and tennis, and oh. a couple of years ago I started with golf, but uh, I don't have the time really to, to make <laughs> good improvements. Yeah, keep <laughs> yeah, so another hobby is gardening. Yes. Uh, because uh, you and that. and this is also a tip in addition to your hard work you you need something besides so you need breaks and mm -hmm. you need a rest really mm -hmm. to recover and to get power again and therefore during summertime I, I love love it to be in the garden and yeah. so if you had to say one big difference between our training in America 
in the United States and the training that you have yeah. right in Germany? Um, you have a very structured training in the United States, mm -hmm. which we don't have in Germany. So in Germany, it strongly depends on where you are and who is uh, head of the department and whether the department invests and, and has some structural program. Um, for example, you can also spend your training time at a small hospital, which means you won't see huge surgery or reconstructive surgery. But if you are trained at a university hospital, you see all the different types of surgery, you, you have an idea about the different fields of, of urology, but maybe you don't do that number of uh, surgical interventions as you do at a smaller hospital. So yes. there are some pros and cons uh, for, for all the places in Germany. But as I said, it's not standardized and that makes it difficult. Yeah, that, uh, that I can say that the structure uh, I think is very, um, very well regulated um, uh, for our specialty and others. Well, um, you come to Jackson Hole you really uh, have um, really contributed so much, not only for science and neurology, but also in terms of relationship, you know, come to Jackson Hole, this is so important. Um, how do you feel about this meaning uh, that is kind of different from other meanings, and um, why would you you know, encourage anybody to come here? It's one of my favorite meetings, I must really say, because it's a very good combination of high quality uh, science and on the other hand, friendship and meet good people <laughs> and have fun. Uh, the format is unique and this impressed me from the beginning. So it's not just you have this uh, presentations and then two minutes discussions and then it, that's it. So you have the presentations in the morning and then you have the critique pan panel in the afternoon and this is completely different. Mm -hmm. At the larger meetings like the AOA, mm -hmm. you hear all the guys, but there's not enough time really to discuss and some of the younger people in the audience, they don't understand that what the guy is telling you is nothing new. Mm -hmm. But here it's critiqued and the critiquer is a former speaker mm -hmm. and he is a guy uh, who also has experience in that field. So right. he is an expert and he clearly can show to the audience that was not good or this was excellent mm -hmm. and where are the drawbacks. So this is really, it's high scientific level and the, the discussion is and the critique panel is the most important part of it. I see. Do you think this uh, this type of format is uh, something that culturally is a, would be accepted in other places or this is a little bit different? Yeah, I think, uh, I, I believe that is one of the best formats. Yeah. Yeah. The problem with the huge meetings is that they live from the number of people attending. So they need, let's say, a high number of presentations accepted mm -hmm. and that makes the time for discussion short. Short, yeah, so that's right. They have to really include everybody. Yeah, they have to include everybody. That means uh, they have parallel sessions and that's also one of the disadvantages. Here you have everybody in one room. Mm -hmm. So and at a huge meeting you have uh, 10 parallel sessions and you always have the impression I'm just in a wrong session. <laughs> and we always have the German night cooking. Uh, <laughs> that is the most uh, beautiful thing. I uh, really like to thank you so much for your uh, tremendous work that you do all the time scientifically, for your cooking, yeah. to be my friend, one of my best friends we can say, uh, and also a great skier, <laughs> so, uh, and great surgeon, right? So I think you're so important to motivate the new generation especially the, those females uh, urologists that want to really do something uh, more international or uh, uh, 
espresso that uh, they, you know, they're used to. I think this is great. And I think you're one of the pioneers. Thank you. In everything you do. So I'd like to thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's always an honor and a pleasure to be here. And I just can encourage everybody to join and to, to <laughs> come and to attend the meeting. <laughs> thank you so much, Margit. All right, thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the audience, and uh, we'll keep uh, going with uh, Ralph Hopkins' legacy. Thank you.